So this is definitely just a, a document don't create day today. So I'm over here in Punta Cana. We uh, have, I think it's just across there, if you can see it, nah, it's in the background here. Just across there is a place called Blue Mall, just across the way. Um, so I just went there for my lunch. Got into Punta about three hours ago um, from the capital. Uh, I'm straight into my apartment, drop my stuff, have a shower, and I'm out. Operator style. I love to do that. Like where you do a stopover in a city before you fly, I've always loved to do that. I've always felt like, it's just like, this, this is when I'm sort of separating myself off from everything else. I, always try, I actually always try and do that, is go to the city I'm gonna fly from the night before and just clear my head, be there, get focused on a mission, you know, uh, and, then, and then go out and enjoy the city a little bit as well. But it's just to be there alone. Something about it, it's like drop my stuff, I'm an operator get out my rifle, head to the nearest rooftop, get the sights lined up, you know. There's something about that energy though, just like you're in there as a secret agent or something. I, that's, that's how I felt when I got to Sao Paulo. I was in Sao Paulo for two days and I was just like, I don't want to speak to anyone, I don't want to do anything, I just want to explore the city. I want to go to this street, this street, I want to go to the Russian Orthodox Church in Sao Paulo before I fly on. And um, it's kind of what I like here, it's just like I'm just here, I'm going to do this, this and this and then I'm going to be getting ready to go tomorrow. Um, so yeah, um, <clears throat> been a crazy year, man. Been a crazy year. It's going to be mad to get back into the UK. Um, it, it, the, the most, the strangest part is I've only just started to feel relaxed, honestly, about three days ago. <laughs> I've had periods of relaxation, but I've not had like days where I felt like really relaxed. Um, it's been such a process of like a fucking change coming off me, you know? Um, it's a crazy fucking world that we live in, man. Uh, because when you do travel solo and, and you, you don't travel somewhere, you live somewhere, you live there, you take a piece of that you take a piece of that place with you and, and it literally becomes a little part of your personality. Um, I definitely experienced this when I first moved to Spain when I was 20, uh, 21, I think. I'd have been 21, 22 um, for my first job out there. And man, like that really opened up my whole world. It really did. Um, living over there for nine, 10 months alone having to make new friends, learning to make new friends, uh, learning the language or perfecting the language. I, I knew the grammar and stuff, but I didn't know how to speak particularly well. Um, so that was just this whole learning curve, learning a new culture, a new life, uh, new hours as well. I've never gone back to UK hours. I've never gone back to sitting down at six o'clock, having my dinner and then watching EastEnders like, because the Spanish have dinner very late at like 10 o'clock. Um, I've always done that ever since ever, ever since living there I've never gone back to UK time and that's 16 years ago um, so um, anything else yeah so so being here is very free it's very free right it's very like when you have that the biggest fucking stress we have in the West in America in the UK especially as men is we're pretending to be something we're not. We're pretending that we're nice, frankly. And it's like, you're not nice, bro. The, the nice person you think you are, look, you don't know yourself. You do not know yourself. But yeah, there's something about the, um, the UK passive aggressive nice guy culture. I actually loathe guys like that because I just see them as, as men who won't look at themselves in the mirror. They won't admit to themselves who they are. Um, you're not that nice. You're nowhere near as nice as you think you are. Nowhere near. Read the book Jekyll and Hyde. Just read that fucking book. You have Hyde inside you. You have Henry, you have Henry Jekyll, the approval seeking guy, and that's okay. But you have Hyde inside you. And just like Hyde, he's all withered and fucked up. He's all small and stunted and scrunched. Because you've been suppressing him 
in English culture for, 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 for your entire life. Same with the Americans. There's no difference. There's no difference. People think like, you know, like, um, like black Americans and stuff, the brothers, they're all these super cool guys just chilling, you know, just, just cool swinging kind of guys. There's, trust me, there's tons of them out here. There's tons of them in Brazil. Many of them are just very, very stiff. Um, I've winged some of them in the past and it was quite funny because it's like, these guys were older than me. And um, there was, um, I went past this bar. I went past and I kind of like, I looked in, I was like, and then I stopped about 10 meters past it and I thought, did I just see that? I went back again, looked in, I'm like, yeah, there's like 40 chicks there in nurses outfits. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get my shopping, go shopping, and then come back to the bar. And I see these, uh, these American guys in here, these, these, these black guys, these brothers. And uh, they were actually very wealthy, very educated guys, really cool guys. They were just having their drinks and stuff. And they, you, I could see that they were looking at the girls. They wanted to, to approach the girls. Um, and I approached them like as some of them, they were inside, like they were doing some kind of a graduation thing, nurse's graduation thing. So I approached them, got some photos with some of them, a bit of banter, a bit of a video, whatever. And then the girls went into their hotel and then I started speaking to the guys. I said to the guys after, we were talking and after a bit I said, what are you guys up to now? And they're like, well, I was just not really doing that much. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna just see if I get those nurses to come out. So I went into the hotel, which was next door. They were, and they were like, whoa, you know, this guy's coming in, right? I said, yeah, do, do you girls wanna come and have drinks with us? And uh, they were like, they were like 22 to 25. They were just like, yeah, definitely, you know? So, uh, so I walked back into the bar this is no word of a lie. I walked back into the bar, which was practically empty, with like 25 chicks dressed in nursing, nurses' costumes behind me. <laughs> and uh, I like went straight over to went straight over to the to the owner because they were closing because it was like COVID lockdown and stuff like that. I was like, can we go in that back room there? He was like, yeah, sure. So I was like, all right, two bottles of wine, <laughs> let's go. And uh, I just said to the American guys, I was like, guys, come on, <laughs> you know the drill. Um, and so we had this great night with these guys and uh, they absolutely loved it. Like, I think like one of the guys like legitimately pulled, I don't know if he's still in touch with this girl, but he was absolutely over the moon, uh, whatever his name was. He was a lawyer in Florida. Um, he came back and he was like, Joseph, you're a bad man. <laughs> um, but it's just funny because they were older than me. They were American, you know, guys, whatever, black guys, whatever. And they were, they were just too timid to approach. They were too timid to approach. Uh, if they were Dominican guys or Brazilian guys, they would have approached, for sure. 100%. They would have been all over these girls. 100 million percent. Um, right, I'm gonna get myself into the supermarket now. Um, so, all right, this is a, we get the lockers in the supermarket. Um, so you leave, your, you leave your backpack in here. Here we go, my code in. There we go. And uh, yeah, and, and so you can just see this is a cultural thing that, that people have absorbed. Be, but it, it, the thing is, it's so deep. It's so fucking deep. I've realized this is. When you let it go, when you let it go, the place you feel it, it's not your brain, or in my case anyway. When I just let that shit go, I feel it in my body. I've realized this more and more, like, we don't listen to our bodies, but our bodies know a lot of stuff. Yeah, they really do, like, so like there's a, there's a, and this is what I found, like, when I get like, like I get really relaxed, like I truly actually don't care. My body feels different. It literally feels just swinging, just relaxed. Um, there's so much tension that we're carrying. It's fundamentally, it is fundamentally because we're like, it's, it's like basically blokes have been shamed out of being blokes. It's just like, uh, it, I can see how guys can get fucked off. About. My friend out here who's in his, in his mid 40s, he had a phase where he, he was really he, he was really angry because 
he looked back over his life and he looked at the way he was he was brainwashed by whatever David Beckham wearing a sarong all this stuff many of his favorite musicians and he said it, it was all just a liberal psyop to basically demasculinize me uh, now that guy has a four-figure lay count so <laughs> he did manage to keep something intact um, but yeah, he was he, he was really like it was something that bothered him a lot, and I think I think everyone's been affected by it, unfortunately, in these cultures. Um, this island right here is one of the best places I think. I think everyone should come out here for a week, you know, for for a month, um, and just just feel it, feel the vibes. Um, in in a totally different way. You know, other guys who are super, it's a different way because they're a lot more aggressive, um, but it's like um, in some of the Arab countries and stuff, those guys, because they're like, they literally know that they run stuff socially. It's a different kind of thing, but they've got a bit of that energy as well. Um, you look at our guys like in Scandinavia, they used to be, at, they used to literally be the most fearsome warriors on earth. You see them now, mate. It's honestly, I see them walking up and down the strip sometimes. It's like the little, um, you know, the little bear who's just like, I don't know, this girl's like whipping him along the way, you know? Um, for me, what I've got now, this is pretty, this is everything, to be honest. This is everything. I don't give a shit about the girls. Don't care. I don't care. This is everything. The feeling I've got in my body right now where I can just be in a supermarket, with my shades on, just shouting into the phone in a foreign land. This is what it is. And I'm gonna be the same when I get back into the UK as well. So the last thing I'll say is I do feel a little bit strange about coming into the UK. Uh, it's just gonna be weird, man. It's just gonna be a weird feeling. I've uh, been, out, been out, out of it for 11 months. Um, this is my reality now. Um, I, I'm gonna stay in Europe, Europe for a period of time. I thought I was gonna do a year in Europe. I, I was, I'm thinking about it now and I'm like, I thought I was gonna repeat my year in the Balkans and stuff. And I, I'm gonna go back in, but it's not gonna be a full year. It's not. I'm so grateful for that year I had at 37. I never thought I'd end up living in a place like Romania or North Macedonia. But, um, yeah, I don't think I'll last more than about five months in Europe, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, we'll see, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, I'll leave things there.